Hey Crafty Makers, welcome to the Reddit Crafter. My name is Ashley and today I got some Dollar Tree DIYs for you. So let's get into the video. Today's first project, I used three of the wood pieces from Dollar Tree. I removed the stickers and the plastic tab as well as a wooden house. After that, stick your three boards together and make a mark in that middle board right in the middle about halfway up a couple inches above your house. Then just connect your points in a triangle shape and that's where your second roof will be. At the top you have a triangle and that's where you will cut. You're just going to put your piece of wood in your saw and cut on each one of those lines to get the roof. I used my miter box to help me make these cuts. You can use whatever is easiest for you. After a couple of tries, I was able to get the angle of the roof that I wanted, and then we're gonna start gluing everything together. To get a nice sturdy hold, I ran a line of Gorilla hot glue down the inside of that first plank, glued it to the middle piece, and done the same thing on the opposite side. Make sure you clean up any wood glue that may seep out because it won't stain if you don't. I then took some craft sticks and glued three of those going up the back, making sure to get it across the middle and on all three pieces of wood. Then we're gonna flip that over, trace our house shape out so we can glue it right back to the church. Then we're gonna start cutting out craft sticks to make our roof. The best tool for this job would be some miter shears, but I loaned them to my son and he did not put them back, so I couldn't find them. But I'm using 10 snips and they worked out fine. Just measure each one of your pieces and then cut two of each of those pieces for, for your roof. Once you have two pieces for each roof, you're going to start gluing them. Now the bottom, just glue your craft sticks onto that house and that you will be done with that. On the second level, I'm going to glue some Jenga blocks on the inside edge of each of those craft sticks and then glue that down Then we're going to do the same thing to the very top level. Glue down your Jenga blocks on the inside edge. Flip that over and glue those Jenga blocks to the top of the roof. I then made a little cross out of some craft sticks to glue at the top. Then we're going to stain it with my favorite stain antique waverly wax water and a little bit of uh ink waverly chalk paint make sure you stain the front the back the sides all the nooks and crannies and then use a wet baby wipe to distress it or to wipe off the extra stain and i just love how it gives it that old weathered look once that's all dry I am going to, well, first I painted a door in that little cross, but then I'm going to start dry brushing some white Waverly chalk paint on the roof of each level. Well, as glue down that cross and door to my church. I did just use a regular brush to get that paint on there, but mm, don't do that. Use a chippy brush because it gives a better effect. And I painted one of these oval signs. You can get them at the Dollar Tree or Walmart with white Waverly chalk paint. Dried it and then hot glued my church right on down to that plaque. 
And for a little extra support, I took a large tumbling tower game piece from Walmart and glued that on the very bottom. Then I took bottle brush tree I got from Walmart, took the fern chalk paint from Waverly, and painted that little bottle brush tree. Then I used real brown from Folk Art and painted the trunk of the tree, then hot glued them on either side of my church. Then taking some Mod Podge, put a nice healthy layer on your plaque in front of the church. The faux snow from Dollar Tree. Sprinkle that on there and you got yourself a beautiful church with a snowy front and I just could keep adding more details but I just left it there plain and simple and beautiful. I have always wanted to make one of these little red trucks, so I took a stab at it. I know other DIYers have done this in the past and it's nothing new, but it was a new craft for me. So first, I took my heat tool and gradually heated up the hot glue underneath those 2D pieces. Then I was able to pry them off without breaking anything or damaging the truck. The reason you want to do this is because you're going to have to flip it over and you want to put those pieces on the opposite side so you can have, you know, the same looking truck on both sides. You'll see what I mean. After you heat everything up and scrape everything off and get all that glitter off, I used my little... You see that little pink sweeper thingamajigger? It works wonders. And I'll leave a link to it in my Amazon uh, links in the description box. After that, just pry those staples out and take that jute cord off. And um, remove the tree from the second truck as well. This is what you should have. Just glue those 2D pieces on the opposite side and use your other truck as a guide to help you get it where it needs to go. Glue on those hubcaps. After I placed the hubcaps, I used the Craftwise chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree to paint each one of the four tires. So we have the same finish on each one. Then for the fence of the truck, I'm going to use a dowel rod and cut it down to about six inches a piece. And for the bed of the truck, we're gonna use those crates. I started off by painting my dowel rods all white, all four, you know, sides, and those two inch craft sticks white as well. That's what we will be attaching the fence to the truck with and keeping our fence together. Once you're done with the fence, set that aside and start with your truck. I painted it crimson by Waverly Chuck Paints, and this will give you a nice cohesive finish for both trucks. Make sure when you're painting, you get the top and the sides and inside that window. It will just give you a more high-end look. To get the tires on, I just traced that little cap with white Sharpie paint marker and then filled it in with my white Waverly chalk paint and a little detail brush. My son did want to help with this part, so you'll see a clip of him. And So we're going to work on the bed of the truck. Glue one crate 
upside down and one crate right side up. The one that's right side up will go in the back of the truck so you can set trees in. Then I gave it a little rough coat of white chalk paint so you have a more finished product. Paint the front and back of your crates red. Then we're going to attach the fences of the truck. Just a little couple dots of hot glue. Hold that fence down till it sets up. And then do your next one. Same thing. Dot of hot glue. And then attach your fence. Then we're going to attach our inside part of our truck. I did go around that top crate in the back with some red. I don't know if it done anything but just put a boatload of hot glue down on that truck and then set your crate inside where you want it to be. Flip it over and put some pressure and then do the same thing with the opposite side making sure everything's going to set level and flush to each other. And then the hard part is over. Now it's time to decorate your truck. I took a window clean from Walmart, cut out the words uh, fresh cut, and then used some Mod Podge to stick that down to my truck. I then used my Cricut scraper to scrape out all the extra Mod Podge and any air bubbles, and then put a layer of Mod Podge over that. How many times can we say Mod Podge? And I will distress my truck with some Ink Waverly chalk paint and a stencil, stencil brush from Dollar Tree. I did focus on the fencing, the hubcaps, and the edges and bottom of the truck where it would naturally be rusty and weathered and dirty. Then I took a little detail brush and took a little bit of black paint almost a dry brush and drew on or brushed on a little door to the best of my ability and then I made a little truck handle and we're pretty much done and this is how it turns out so stinking cute and I'm proud of myself Next project is easy. I took a sock from the Dollar Tree, slipped in a little glass votive candle holder, cut off the bottom of the sock, rolled the seam up a little bit, and then started hot gluing that around the very outer edge so we could have a flat surface to set our candle back down. Then when you're done with that bottom, flip it over and put a little hot glue around the top seam as well. We'll keep the sock from rolling down. Then to cover up that messy edge, I took this four ply jute from Walmart and glued that around the top seam for a more high end finished look. Once I went around the top, I cut off that extra jute and I did not like how the buffalo check pattern did not start at the very top of the candle so I decided to wrap more jute around the candle until I hit the top of that buffalo check pattern tie a knot and then cut off the excess then made a little bow to glue on the front of our candle and this is how it turns out Our next project will be three more candles. I'm going to use some ribbon, a image from this Dollar Tree calendar, and some Dollar Tree stickers. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the label off of our candle. And I thought these were so cute. They look like little crocs to me, um, or milk jugs even. So I took that label off and placed my calendar image right over that sticky part, put a little Mod Podge on the top, 
and around the edges. There's a trick with saran wrap. You just take a piece and put it on top of your Mod Podge image and you can use that to get out all the air bubbles and it leaves a really clean finish um, and doesn't rip your paper or anything like that. It's a nice, nice hack. Next, I just cleaned off a little bit of Mod Podge and stickiness around that image. Then put a nice little thin layer right back on top put some jute around the top of that a few times tied a knot cut off the excess jute and then i went around it a few times with some it looks like baker's twine green and white baker's twine to me but it was pretty it came from dollar tree i went around the top a few times with that tied a knot cut off the excess and then made a bow with that baker's twine then I put a little dot of hot glue and attached the bow to my candle and that's it. This one was really simple and it turned out so pretty. I think they'll look good on tiered trays or even in a grouping of three. The next candle I took this candy cane striped ribbon from the Dollar Tree and hot glued that around the very top. Then we're going to take a heat tool or a blow dryer and heat that label up, remove the label and put down a coordinating image from a window cling that's going to match your ribbon. That's it, that's all you have to do and it is so cute. The next candle I created, I took this buffalo check ribbon I got from Walmart, glued that around the top of it, removed that label, and then put a little red truck from the sticker packs at Dollar Tree. I also took a puffy tree sticker, cut that at an angle to where I could put it in the back of the bed of the truck. And I took two bells, put that on a piece of jute, tied up a little bow out of that jute twine stuff <laughs> that we love so much, cut off the excess and hot glued that to the little bells. That's it. That's all you have to do and they turn out so high-end looking and so cute. I love them Here is all three of the candles. Oh, so cute Okay, next last final project. We will be using this galvanized house a little Santa wood round from Walmart some beads a little bit of greenery and some faux snow also some white Waverly chalk paint. Start off by tracing the circle of the house onto your wood round put, so you know where to put your hot glue. Add your hot glue around the outer edge of that circle and place it onto your house. This is going to give us something to stick our Santa to. After we do that, we will make a wreath with that greenery, whatever kind of greenery you wanna use. Go ahead and hot glue that to the outer part of that circle. Then just rip off that backing to the Santa. We don't need it. Hot glue in the middle of that wreath. Just take a little stencil brush or a chippy brush and a little bit of paint and add your paint to the roof. Then I went ahead and added some to my greenery. I painted the base of my house because I just thought it looked better. And uh, do whatever you wanna do. It was easy. Or you can start off by painting it white. Whatever suits your fancy. Next, I took my beads and painted them white and then dried them and we're going to create a snowman i have a small medium and large bead so take your large bead and glue your medium bead on then take that smaller bead and glue that on top then we're going to go ahead and draw our snowman face with a black oil based sharpie marker they're awesome just two dots for the eyes several dots for the mouth and then some paint pumpkin colored Waverly chalk paint for the nose. Just do a little slight triangle going up. Do bigger dots for his belly. And then I took that ribbon and put some slits in the end of it to make it look more like a scarf and then hot glue that around our little snowman. 
It is so cute. We're making this snowman for the little corner edge of our house. If you didn't know that already. Next, I took a finial I got from Walmart. And we're going to paint it black. Well, go ahead and hot glue your snowman. You don't have to. I just did. I didn't know what I was going to do for the hat until I found this little finial. For some reason, I thought the hat was going to look good with the Waverly wax, but it didn't. So I scratched that idea and painted it black. After I got it all painted, I dried it, and then we're going to add that candy cane stripe ribbon to the brim of the hat. Just a very thin little piece. Hot glue it, and then I'm going to put some holly leaves and berries. I got the holly leaves from the boxwood greenery at Walmart. I just took three little leaves off of that and then the holly berries off of that tree out of the truck. I hot glued them in the, you know, shape of a holly leaf and then took took those berries and hot glued them in the middle this hat like turned out so cute I was so proud of myself <laughs> you guys I'm sick so thanks for putting up with me I want to take this time to also thank you guys for all of your support um if you like what you see go ahead and hit that subscribe button it really really does help also if you could hit the like button share my videos whatever you can do to help me grow would be greatly appreciated by me this is like one of my dreams so i hope my dream come true <laughs> this is how it turned out and i hope you guys love it as much as i do i did also add santa with some Dollar Tree stickers, uh, letters that I found. So that was a cute added touch.